Hello and good day, eh? Welcome to the Super Good Camping Podcast. My name is Pamela. Oh, I'm Tim. And we are from supergoodcamping.com. We are here because we are on a mission to inspire other families to enjoy camping adventures such as we have with our kids. Today, we want to talk a little bit about some, some extreme adventures that you could have while you're camping here in Ontario, Canada. Not necessarily things for the faint of heart or for people that are new. So I wouldn't necessarily suggest that if this is your first time going camping that, that you undertake these. Or if you do undertake them, undertake them with a seasoned guide or somebody that's experienced and knows what they're doing Uh, because there can be some risk involved and we'll talk a little bit about some of the potential risks or challenges of some of these adventures as we go through the first is algonquin park canoe trip um so for some that might not seem that might seem pretty tame but it's uh something that could be could go badly just depending on what the weather turns out to be whether um, you're in an isolated area and having trouble navigating where you're going so just to be aware it's accessible through huntsville and whitney uh just located off highway 60 and there can be remote locations there can be potential wildlife encounters with things like bear and moose and weather can change on a dime here in Ontario. Um, but you can see pristine lakes and dense forests and you can get to enjoy some of those wildlife encounters as long as you do it safely. Um, you need a backcountry camping permit from Algonquin and you'll take want to take the required gear. So things like, like your canoe and your paddles. Don't forget paddles, don't leave the paddles behind. Uh, waterproof gear, dry bags and um, bear resistant food containers just because you could You don't want to be attracting bears and some navigation tools and usually a satellite locator type equipment is a good idea just because you may not have cell phone access. And I highly recommend a map and a compass. Uh, Old fashioned tools like that. I I, I am old fashioned, (laughs) but I do take the satellite communicator. So, you know, mix a mix. Another, another, uh, extreme extreme ish adventure can, uh, can be had at bruce uh, peninsula national park it's um, located between georgian bay and lake huron uh, near tobermory so one of the cool things about it is you can do cl- uh, cliff top camping uh, with just amazing views of georgian bay but you need to know that the terrain is can be pretty pretty rugged uh, potential for you know falling and that sort of jazz, some pretty strong winds while you're there. Um, you do, you are required to have a backcountry camping permit f- uh, because it's a, a national park. It's it's slightly different deal than than most of the stuff that I talk about because we're talking about Ontario provincial parks. But yeah, the waters there around Bruce Peninsula are stunning in terms of clear blue. People will sometimes do scuba diving and snorkeling around that area too, around Tobermory, just to see the shipwrecks. Yeah, what is, that's F- Fathom Five National Park. That's yeah. next to it. There, yeah, right. you can. It, the water's very clear. It's topaz, topaz colored. Yeah. Is that the right word? Uh, but it's very clear, so you can you can see the the, the shipwrecks. Uh, uh, it's awesome. Cool. Uh, Quetico Provincial Park. So it's located in northwestern Ontario, near the border with Minnesota, USA. Which I wouldn't even thought of that but anyway it's located near minnesota uh, accessible from atacokan and thunder bay wilderness camping adventures already be had there with limited human impact if you're really looking to be a hermit and get away from peoples um risks like though unfortunately are isolation if you aren't around human peoples and challenging navigation because of being remote and possible wildlife encounters as well so just you can reference our our bear proofing your campsite um, podcast for tips about how not to attract bears to you and um, you will need a quetico interior camping permit in order to camp there uh, manitoulin island uh, the coastal hike it's uh Manitoulin Island is the largest freshwater island in the world. Cool. It's cool. I, I remember <laughs> reading that the first time. I was, I was like, what, what, what? Wow. It's accessible by ferry from Tobermory or by the Little Current Swing Bridge. It's, uh, it's coastal camping uh, on Lake Huron's shores, uh, and you can run into things like unpredictable weather. Lake Huron's big, so unpredictable weather. Uh, there are very limited facilities um, it, it, it's pretty rough terrain. You're not going to get a comfort station on Manitoulin Island. I don't think you are. <laughs> uh, Killarney Provincial Park's La Cloche uh, Silhouette Trail. So we've done the crack uh, trail at Killarney, and, and it was somewhat challenging. Um, I have, we haven't done the La Cloche, so no. 
no personal reference to that. But um, anyways, it's again, rocky landscape and stunning views, which absolutely was the case when we did the crack. Uh, but there can be steep climbs, there can be challenging terrains. There was also like just some very rough terrain trying to get to the last part of the crack trail, which uh, so I assume is similar for La Cloche. And uh, wildlife encounters potentially if you're camping there. Um, backcountry camping permit is required from uh, Killarney Provincial Park. And good luck getting that because you're going to have to be kind of online exactly five months before at seven o'clock in the morning and click on just the right thing just the right time yeah it's it's much longer than the uh, than the crack like you can don't hold me to it i want to say you can do something like five days i believe i i'm sure i'm wrong but it's it, it it's a much longer trail like you can you can hike a bunch camp hike a bunch more camp hike a bunch more that kind of deal uh, next on the list is tomogamy and and I just I won't say anything. Go watch Camper Christina's videos. <laughs> <laughs> yes. she, she can show you all about how how challenging it can be, how beautiful it can be, but how challenging it can be. It's uh, north northeastern Ontario near the town of Tomogamy. Crazy that it, it's accessible by road uh, or float plane. Um, I think I think Hap, Hap Wilson's. Uh, Echo Lodge, Eco Lodge, uh, you can you can get a float plane into that. You know, it's it's remote backcountry camping. It's very very rugged. Often, I say again, watch Camper Christina's videos. It's you, you know, the the portages uh, can be can be pretty brutal, uh, and and some of the some of the paddling is pretty pretty gnarly as well. Um, I think you were talking just the other day about the fact that um, in some places like that, they don't put, like you don't get portage signs because they don't even want your plastic signs up. There. Yeah, there, there's uh, very much a, a leave no trace um, concept there. Uh, and I know there was a fire. Oh, I can't even remember when now. Uh, but uh, so people, in, rather than put, you know, um, portage signs or um, trail markering uh, tape um, little, little bits of plastic that you you know you, you can see on a, on a tree branch uh, they often will put a blaze like take a you know take a hack out of a, out of a trunk and you follow the blazes that's how you that's what that's what you see well if you, once you have a fire guess what no more blazes because because the trees are gone or the trees are burnt so it makes it makes it makes it challenging. Right, so harder to navigate. So have your navigation tools and maps and GPS and all that, hopefully, to find your way around. Yep. Uh, Niagara Glen Bouldering and Camping, uh, which is located located near the Niagara River Gorge, so it's close to the to Niagara Falls. Um, so you could kind of do a little like overnight hotel thing in Niagara Falls and then head out to the Niagara River Gorge for bouldering uh, or camp out there the um, bouldering so it's, it's it's any kind of hazard you might have while you're rock climbing is going to be a potential hazard um there's the potential for falls twisting your ankle breaking your bones so just be aware of all of that and have some uh plans for what if there is an emergency like that and there can be changing weather conditions uh and again i i would not head out and do some climbing somewhere like that if I did not if I was not an experienced climber I would hire somebody who was an experienced climber to take me out on an adventure like that which is what exactly what Brandon and I did when we went to Collingwood this past summer that we had an experienced climber to come out with us and he took us caving but part of that experience was involved in lowering us with a harness down into some of the caves so he was an experienced climber as well as caver. Uh, Wabakimi Provincial Park. It's in uh, northwestern Ontario. Um, you can get at it through uh, towns like uh, Armstrong and Nakina. Um, it's it's huge. It's massive. It's it's a and it's it it defines the word wilderness, I suppose. Uh, just tons and tons and tons of lakes you're going to run into things like isolation because there's nobody around man who's uh lost lakes i'm pretty sure uh john uh has a has a video where he i, I couldn't don't even remember how many days but but just days and days and days and days and days and n not a single soul that he ran into um you're gonna have uh, challenging navigation in, in an area that, that's that big and uh, you're gonna run into things like uh, unpredictable weather you know, there's going to be wildlife uh, 
so again you know be be smart be, be keep your keep your stuff bear proofed and uh, it is you do uh, you are required to uh, to to get a backcountry permit uh, for camping in Wabagimi. Uh, so, Pacasqua National Park Coastal Trail, which is located on the shores of Lake Superior in northwestern Ontario, um, you can access it through Marathon and Wawa. I was thinking Wawa Wawa, like the Charlie Brown teacher. Wah, 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 wah. Okay. <laughs> The coastal is a coastal coastal wilderness camping uh, on Lake Superior. Lake Superior is pretty wild. It's rugged terrain, unpredictable weather, and remote. So all all of the above. And you will need a backcountry permit in order to camp there. Um, so you'll want sturdy hiking boots because it's pretty rugged, and waterproof, windproof clothing, lightweight, compact camping gear. Just if you're out in the middle of nowhere, you don't want to be lugging unnecessary weight with you and uh, so that's it in terms of some of our kind of topics for very um, extreme outdoor wilderness type camping uh, just generally speaking some of the general risks and uh, things considerations which we've mentioned a few times is weather conditions can be unpredictable here in Ontario they can go from extreme heat to sudden cold and there can wind can whip up at a moment's notice and you can have torrential rainfalls and you can have thunder lightning and even tornadoes in some instances so just be aware try to have your emergency weather or your what's your environmental can environment Canada Oh, the, my, my emergency little radio. radio. Yeah. Um, just in order to be able to keep abreast of any kind of changing weather conditions. Um, wildlife, just be aware. Two bears, generally speaking, not usually grizzly bears here, but um, you still don't want to be attracting bears or having nuisance bears. And moose, moose are not uh, something you necessarily want to be in close encounters with. They can be dangerous animals. Um, and other wildlife, which are just often nuisance like raccoons. Uh, isolation, so there is that concern where you're out in the middle of nowhere and if something were to happen, you need some means of being able to get help. And there is going to be a long time before help is going to be able to get to you. So it's not something where if you need something help instantly, that's not gonna happen. Um, rugged terrain, so landscapes that are difficult to navigate, cliffs, uh, challenging trails to hike. Um, if you're not in good physical condition, maybe this is not the right thing for you. And navigation wise, just navigation can be difficult again because of being out in the middle of nowhere and in cer certain instances where there aren't clear cut trails and markers that you may have trouble finding where you're supposed to be going. That pretty much covers it. That's it for us for today. Thank you so much for listening. Please do tune in again. Uh, our email address, if you want to reach out to us, is hi at supergoodcamping.com. That's H-I at supergoodcamping.com. And we are on all of the social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And please do subscribe to us on YouTube. We would love that. And we'll talk to you again soon. Bye. Bye.